Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Chris Sims, BC Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Her website, taxpayer.com. Well, welcome back to the show, Chris, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Chris, we have so many government officials across the country uh, going against the advice of all the health officials, taking international trips, going on vacation to Hawaii and other places, including the head of the School of Population and Public Health at the University of British Columbia, which trains all the public health officers. Should there be penalties for this? They say they're not breaking any laws. They're just not going along with health advisories. Yeah, right. And they're also setting a very bad example and being hypocritical. So on both sides of this, so if you think that these uh, health care protocols or the advisories coming out from the government telling you to stay home, stay home, stay home are stupid and wrong, you can be hopping mad because these same people are flying off to nice warm places and doing as they bloody well please, despite what they're telling the rest of us. And if you're on the other side and you think these you know, lockdowns and advisories and travel bans are really important for public health in order to stop the spread of COVID, you can be hopping mad because these actions are dumb and that they will put public health at risk. So people on both sides of the approach to this entire COVID mess have every right to be super ticked off. The one little saving grace we have here in British Columbia is that when it comes to MLAs, and I haven't found one yet, and I'm very open to hearing if any MLAs flew the coop over the Christmas and New Year's break, if any MLAs tried to pull this nonsense and people were mad enough at them, they could be recalled. They can be fired in between elections. British Columbia is singular in this way. We are the only ones across Canada that have the ability to call that MLA to the carpet and say, you screwed up and you screwed up so badly, we're not waiting for the next election, we're firing you. And that is a very powerful tool for democracy. So much so that Alberta Premier Jason Kenney partially campaigned on that. He made a huge promise during the last Alberta election saying that he wants to bring in recall legislation because you should be able to fire a politician that is doing a bad thing. Well, They're really in hot water there right now with Alberta, with their members of their provincial assembly flying to vacation destinations while telling everybody else, stay home, stay home, stay home, so much so that you can't go hug your mom on Christmas, but you can fly to Hawaii. That doesn't pass the smell test, and a lot of people are rightfully ticked off. So the one little saving grace I would say here in BC is that we do have recall legislation when it comes to elected officials. As far as, you know, taxpayer-funded public health officials who aren't elected, though, that's a little trickier because we can't recall them. They're not elected to office. Uh, perhaps, that they're, you know, they should be sanctioned in some other way. But frankly, people on both sides of this issue have every right to expect more accountability uh, from the people who make our laws. No matter what you think, it's too restrictive or not restrictive enough. They both should be called to the carpet uh, because this is hypocrisy. And they keep on saying we're all in this together. Well, we're really not. Number one, the vast majority of the job losses, salary cuts, and wage losses have been felt within the private sector. Government workers, by and large, have not been affected by this. There have been some, of course, uh, but the big brunt of this has been borne by the private sector. So for very high-paid government officials to turn around and say we're all in this together and go on vacation while not taking a salary cut, it's just really compounding the anger here. We have, uh, when you say there's a cost to taxpayers, one of Ontario's top hospital administrators was fired for taking a foreign vacation, and he gets two years severance 
and he was getting paid over six hundred fifty thousand dollars a year plus twenty five grand a year in benefits. So he's getting over a million dollars to leave a job for being stupid. Very, very expensive, isn't it? And I also heard, this is not, I don't think this has been confirmed yet, I heard that in some cases that employer approved of the vacation. Like, that the mind reels, you know, in the middle of what is going on, when you can't turn on the radio or even drive down the highway without a highway sign yelling at you to stay home, stay home, stay home, it makes you wonder what's going through these officials' heads when they book their flight to Maui or somewhere warm. You know, you just, if if you don't think the rules should apply to you, then fine, the rules shouldn't apply to anybody. But if you think this is a terrible pandemic and everybody's at risk and everybody must lock in and hunger down, then you better walk that walk. So this is where it's doing two things. It's eroding public trust, and it's really showing the hypocrisy, unfortunately, of our elected and government officials. We'll have more with Chris Sims right after this. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the U.S., AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Sims. There's a report that Vancouver-born Grimes, the technopop singer who's the girlfriend of the world's richest man, Elon Musk, got a $90,000 arts grant from the Canadian government, and she doesn't even live in Canada. She lives in L.A. Should they be a little more diligent about who they hand this kind of cash out to? Just a little. So I've seen uh, reports back and forth disputing whether or not uh, she did receive this money. So let's just say, theoretically, that a Canadian artist who has that access to that kind of money did get a $90,000 grant. No, they shouldn't. (laughs) They shouldn't get that money. Uh, This is obviously a gigantic waste of taxpayers' money, and it means that nobody's minding the store. That means that the person on the other end of the application form in Ottawa or Gatineau or wherever that office happens to be federally, that they're not doing their due diligence to find out if this artist is truly a starving artist, you know, one of those Canadian cultural icons that for some reason their poetry or paintings needs to be paid for by taxpayers. Those are few and far between from our perspective, by the way. Um, and so if that person is actually making that kind of dough, no, they absolutely shouldn't be taking a $90,000 grant. If it's going to them directly or to their, their publishing company or what have you, their management group, no, that is a gigantic waste of money. We need to remember that government doesn't have a magical money appreciating machine meaning they don't just take a little bit from us in taxes and then make it bloom into a lot more money and then be able to magically dole it out. No. Every nickel of that $90,000 came from you and from me and from our neighbors and was given to a rich artist in the in these cases. So, yeah, it's a gigantic waste of money, and we need much more accountability in Ottawa. And this is just what we know about. Just the mind reels when you start wondering, which ones haven't we heard about? Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. 
Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Sims. Chris, we're hearing from the Revenue Agency of Canada there's half a billion dollars in unclaimed SERB benefits sitting around, so they're advising people, check, maybe you qualify and you just don't know about it. Also, problems in B.C., apparently the majority of people who applied to get the $500 a person, $1,000 a family COVID benefit from the B.C. government haven't got it and uh, or are having trouble even just applying for it. Should this be a little easier? Well, you'd like to think it would be a little easier. Uh, we knew this was going to be just a flying monkey circus when <laughs> as soon as this started uh, because, frankly, even when things were quote unquote normal before this hell hit our shores a year ago, the federal government had not yet figured out how to pay their federal regular employees yet. The software that they use just for their regular employees, doesn't matter if you're, you know, jockeying a desk somewhere in Ottawa or if you're a Coast Guard captain. So if you are a federal government employee in that way, they still hadn't figured out how to properly process your pay stubs. And that had been going on for something crazy, like five years, costing billions of dollars. So if they can't handle a regular payroll system, what do we expect when there's a pandemic and a massive crisis and all this money flowing everywhere? So we're going to have to wait and see probably years from now when an audit is officially done, when the smoke clears, if even the majority of this money went where it needed to go. Um, we might be lucky if 75% of this needed aid went to the right hands. And so it's just one of those terrible situations where you, you're you sitting there wincing. You know that the money is going out the door and being wasted. And the worst part, you know that there are some people who are truly in need who aren't getting it. Um, I even took a call from somebody just last week who was just right painted himself into a corner. He wasn't able to get any benefits. He was a couple of days away from being thrown out on the street. And they phoned us because he'd been trying for weeks, weeks to get through with Revenue Canada and some form of social assistance. This man was very disabled. Um, and luckily, we were able to contact his local member of parliament, and they were able to sort it out. Uh, by the way, if you're in that boat, your local MP, the riding office, they usually have very good contacts to sort things out for you in Ottawa. Contact them if you're running into major problems. So, yeah, it's one of those bad situations where... We knew that a lot of money needed to go out the door in order to keep people afloat because they were losing their jobs through no fault of their own. Their businesses were being locked down through no fault of their own. So they needed aid. But now we're hearing that, you know, massive big corporations were getting this money and they were giving it in uh, as form of a shareholder dividend. Like, it just makes you shake your head. So we need, once this smoke clears and people are fully back at work, we need a full audit done after this to find out where that money went. You always like to mention city councils that have done a good job during these tough times and those who seem to be ignoring the the public sentiment out there. What's your opinion of Kelowna City Council in British Columbia? You know, we were getting reports uh, from local media there doing a great job, by the way, that it turns out that Kelowna City Council is getting an automatic pay raise. The politicians, the city council people sitting around city council table we're getting a pay raise as of January 1st. <clears throat> this is unacceptable. Frankly, bluntly, um, all politicians should have taken a pay cut back in the springtime. The same way that the Prime Minister of New Zealand did, she took a 20% pay cut. She cut the pay of all of her senior bureaucrats and her ministers at the same time by 20%. Uh, we saw other governments, places like Japan and India, they took similarly big pay cuts, all in solidarity with their people because we're all in this together, right? Unfortunately, here in the federal level, uh, they had their quote-unquote automatic pay, cut, pay hike go through. Fortunately, a big chunk of MPs, after we sounded the alarm, took that money and donated it because they felt so embarrassed. They should be embarrassed. All politicians should have taken a pay cut as one, one step. Number two, there's no way in the clear blue sky that they should be getting a raise right now. And apparently, uh, City Hall is saying, oh, well, it was automatic in the bylaws that we get an automatic pay crease. Who writes the bylaws? They do. So ch change the freaking bylaw then. 
don't take extra money from people who are struggling. And this, again, gets back to our earlier point of the vast majority of the pain and hurt that's been dished out has been dished out to the private part of the economy, small business people, people who work for private companies, people who are self-employed have taken it in the teeth. By large amounts, government employees have not. And so for politicians to turn around and give themselves a raise in the middle of this mess is completely not acceptable. So they need to back off and, frankly, cut their pay. Burnaby City Council, your opinion of them? So before uh, the end of the year, we heard that Burnaby City Council cut their own pay by 10% and then took that amount of money and donated it to a seniors charity that gives money that gives meals to isolated seniors. Bravo. Bravo. We need more city councils to do exactly that. And we heard uh here and there it doesn't sound like all of them uh correct I can be corrected if I'm wrong. It sounds like a chunk of Vancouver city councilors uh took a pay cut as well. And every now and then I'll get an email from some small town across Canada saying, "Hey, we cut our pay." That's very good to hear. And so we think that Burnaby, in this case, should be held up as an example of doing the right thing. And you need to lead by example. If you're going to tell people that they need to shut their business or we're all in this together or people are going to take pay cuts, you have to lead by example. And so we really, really hope that other people follow suit. Chris, if people have anything they'd like to bring up about government waste or misuse of taxpayers' money, where should they go? We would love it if they would visit our website, taxpayer.com, and we have a whole toolkit there for people. And again, no matter who you vote for, we don't care who you vote for, but we want accountable government at all levels of government, period. And so we have a really nifty little toolkit there that shows you how to write a really strong letter, how to write an email, how to send in a letter to the editor, uh, how to call talk radio, how to reach out to podcasts like this one, and how to really affect change in a positive way at every level of government. And we would encourage everybody to do so because not only will you make good changes, you'll feel more empowered. And frankly, I think everybody needs that right now. I know a lot of people are feeling isolated and anxious and more helpless. If you take this kind of action in a peaceful way and and reach out and speak out, you'll feel much better. Chris, people often ask me, is the Taxpayers Federation a political right-wing organization? I don't think so. We're for smaller, more accountable government and for private industry. So private enterprise, small businesses, getting out there and doing it on your own, not relying on government handouts. We don't want corporate welfare. We don't want big government handouts. We don't want government waste. So if that's your thing, then we would love to have you. Uh, we were started back in 1990 in opposition to major tax increases. And at the time, in Saskatchewan and in Ottawa, guess what? There were conservative governments in power at that time. And that is when we started our little protest movement here called the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. So we're for lower taxes, less waste, and more accountable government. Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you. My guest has been Chris Sims, BC Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Her website, as you heard, taxpayer.com. Is there an email people can get a hold of you at? I would love to hear from them. It's a K, so the letter K, Sims, S-I-M-S, at taxpayer.com. K Sims at taxpayer.com. And uh, if you'd like, you can also send questions for our guests to info at howstreet.com, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of Howe Street Media Incorporated.